Hello everybody, this is Kill Me Horde. Welcome back to, uh, West of Loathing. Are you okay, Crazy Pete? Pete looks around. This looks like a good place for a widow. It, it, it sure does, Pete. Oh. <laughs> no, what we got around here? A lot of people. Oh, that's a drink without hats on. What is this? What is this? I had to wear a hat to drink. Bam! Needs more cowbell. I gotta fix that chair for the XP. You know how it is. You gotta fix the chairs for the XP. Where's my XP? One unspent XP. Okay. See bartender for darts. Nah. It's where the chef preps ingredients for cooking. It's also where he parks his beer. Atop this pot belly stove is a pot full of slop. A pot stove top slop pot. Hey, what are you doing in here? Employees only, bud. I'm oh, sorry, I was just, you know, looking around. So you're the nosy type, eh? Well, I prefer adventuresome. As it happens, there's something you can do for me. I'm out of saltpeter, and I need someone to go uh, pick me up some. Saltpeter? Isn't that used to make gunpowder? And other things. Look, who's the chef here? Me or you? Okay, okay. Where can I find it? Your best bet's a military camp. Because it's used to make gunpowder. Shut up. The nearest one is Fort Cowardice. They, ki they keep it in little green jars. Alright, I'll be back. Slop helper. Ladies too busy washing dishes. Well, I'll buy some slop. Play to slop. Ah! <laughs> they pulled guns on each other. They have a spirited discussion about guns. And which one's nicer. The player player's not very good. I'll talk to this old man. He doesn't he doesn't react to me. It is time for the spittoon. This is a spittoon, which is sort of a brass bucket that people spit into instead of spitting on the floor, because not spitting at all is not an option in this society, I guess. I say this despite knowing that you're pretty intimately familiar with spittoons already, sicko. Look, the Jewel Saloon is pretty nice as saloons go. Actual glass in the windows, more than two kinds of drinks, a poker room instead of a cockfighting pit. But this spittoon is still a spittoon. The rancid tobacco spit inside of it isn't fancy rancid tobacco spit. Inspect it. Here we go again. Alright, fine. You're now hunkered down next to a brass filth bucket, which has probably never been cleaned or emptied because you're near the desert and the ambient humidity around here is pretty low. Low enough that s the spit evaporates nearly as quickly as it accumulates. So that's good, right? No, that's bad because it's only the water part of spit that evaporates. This, bu this brass bucket is half full of the rest of the spit. The toxins and filth that don't evaporate. Several years worth distilled and concentrated until it's the consistency of molasses. People aren't allowed to flick cigarette butts into the spittoon anymore because they bounce out. Search it. You're about to put your hand into a bucket of something the color and viscosity of maple syrup. Except instead of maple, it's flavored with the inside of the mouths of people who chew cigars instead of smoking them and have never brushed their teeth. Yeah. Glorp. Feels like putting your hand into a bucket of lukewarm tapioca pudding. Except instead of tapioca, it's basically poison. It smells like someone ran over a skunk, waited a week, and then set it on fire. It feels like your hand is dissolving. Keep searching. You found something. You found a tacky, filth-covered porcelain cow figurine. A useless, disgusting thing that will make a great heirloom for your children, assuming you're still able to have any, and you hate them. <laughs> oh my god. It doesn't help me at all. It's amazing, though. 
Hooray! I want to equip it. Wait, what was there before? Oh, it was my offhand. That was probably a sweet smelling flowers in there. You know what? Go to the poker room. Table's full. No room at the table. Hold on, let me read the rules. Well, it says rules of poker, followed by hundreds of weird rules in tiny print. A flush beats an Arizona straight. Deuces are wild and fours of clubs are double wild. Any player caught with a pocket two must add 31 meat to the pot. Any player passing out drunk at the table must add 33 meat to the pot. Fours are wild and eights of hearts are double wild. Fours are wild unless accompanied by two tens. Homicide queens are wild unless accompanied by a pair of sevens of hearts. Backwards Tennessee flush beats a Montana flush. Any player holding three kings must discard 19 cards. Aces are wild unless accompanied by a two. A player caught cheating must immediately double their bet. Any player holding four one-armed queens of spades must remove their hat. A jack is worth the same as two deuces of spades. A nine loses against an eight of clubs. Two sixes lose against two nines, but are worth the same as pair as two nines. I'm not reading anymore. I'm just... Look, if I do this, then maybe I'll know all the rules and I could just cheese my way through a fight. Or through this. Uh, I'm going to sit down and just poke the dealer emerges from somewhere in the back and sits down next to you. The lady to your right is Claudia, and the player to your left is Jefferson. Auntie's 20 meat. Auntie up. Um, garbage hand. I got, I got two tens. My chance of winning is about 10%. You know what? I'm going to moxiously strategize. You cock your head at a jauntier angle. Plus 20% win chance. You know what? I'll moxiously raise. Got 30%. Uh, too great, 20 meat. Ooh, but I have some gumption. I know I have some gumption. I'm going to gumptiously strategize. I reach over and take one of Claudia's cards without even trying to be sneaky. The nerve. I had a 50%. I had a 50% and I got I had one. I had a Canadian flush, and she had Claudia had a Georgia flush, and Jefferson had a reverse full house. I'm not, I'm not doing that anymore. Nothing makes sense to me. Hello, lady. Oh, bartender. This guy's supposed to fall asleep during a brawl. The good old jewel saloon. Nice to see this old place. Ain't changed much, eh? Been here before? Well, sure, I've been all over these territories. Even spent a little time up north in Canada when I was younger. They got a, the thing they do with the gravy and potatoes is just fascinating. Nice. Well, howdy there. Always nice to see a new face in town. Welcome to the Jewel Saloon. Hey, thanks. I'm Bartholomew. Glad to know you, Bartholomew. Folks around here just call me Lloyd. What can I do for you? Nice to meet you, Lloyd. I saw the sign out front advertising a room. That's right. Finest room in the house and plenty of room for your partner, too. You interested? How much does it cost? Well, that's where you're in luck. The previous tenant was a banker fella, and he paid a month in advance right before getting himself killed by bandits. You seem like a decent sort, so the room's yours if you want it. Uh, however that's pronounced, gratis. Wow, great. Hey, Lloyd. Need help with anything? Well, if you're handy with mechanical type stuff, something's gone wrong with our piano, with our player piano player. I thought the music sounded a little off. Yeah, it's not supposed to sound like that. Uh, I'll see what I can do. Thanks, I'd have poked around in him myself, but I lost the key. Um, can I get some darts? Mm -hmm. 
Signboard, uh, the sign on the dartboard said to see you for darts. Oh, sorry, all the darts got broken months ago. Disappointing. Who's the old man by the piano? Old asshole Ellsbury, tragic fella he is. He was a writer and a poet, came out west to sell his stories, but nobody would buy him. Too weird, his stories. Fantastical like. And too bad, I love that stuff. Well, it don't matter much now, anyhow. He had to get normal work to make ends meet. Did passing well as a prospector until one day he lost his mind in a mind. Hey, what now? Yeah, you know what I mean. He saw something. Something that made him stop telling his weird tales. Made him stop talking near completely, come to that. He just stands there by the piano nowadays. It seems to calm him down, and as long as he doesn't make any trouble, I don't mind him too much. I feel a little sorry for him, to be honest. And poor fella. See you later, Lloyd. With the two L's, and later. I'll try to fix him. Ah, oh, I need a I need a needle to fix him. Wait, hold on. This is my room. It's salt yourself. You call yourself a f a four flushing chicken hugging jerk. Gain effect angry. You know what? I'll keep angry. Postcard on the little table. Blank postcard. Um Oh yeah. I should I should go Weird. I can just climb the stairs up there. Okay. So I'm gonna go to the post office and send a postcard home. Well, I wanna send a postcard, Mr. Postman. Alrighty, let's have it. Write up a quick note to Rufus, letting him know that you've been up to and that you're okay. That'll be... Oh, it's one of them prepaid ones. That'll be zero meat then. Thanks. I'm angry. She's angry too, look at that. Oh, oh my god. I'll go to the desert house. Out in the middle of the desert, you find an abandoned minecart. It's sitting on a section of minecart track about 12 feet long, which starts nowhere in particular and ends at even less of somewhere particular. Check it out. It's mostly full of plain old rocks, not even very interesting looking ones. However, if you left without searching it thoroughly, you'd have just ended up driving yourself crazy later with the thought that you might have missed something valuable. And you spend a good half hour inspecting rocks and eventually find one that might be worth something. Unrefined of meat nugget. Pete clears his throat. Yes, Pete? Ooh, hold on there, partner. You missed one. They gave me another meat nugget. Nice. As you dismount and approach the house where the bandits are holed up, you hear a voice from inside say, What was that? Uh-oh. Looks like you're going to have to be sneaky if you want to avoid a full-on fracas. Well, sneaky is my middle name. Wait, really? Yeah, Sneaky's my middle name. It's Bartholomew Sneaky McNugent. <laughs> oh my fucking god. Hey, Pete. What do you think? Looks like these feathers are expecting trouble. You're going to have to be slicker than a wet rattlesnake if you f figure on taking them unawares. Hmm. There's a dog. From the sound of it, you'd say this doghouse contains an angry dog. This doghouse contains an angry dog. Very funny. You're not going to be able to get past without alerting the gang inside the house. Bring it on! <laughs> I'll probably die here, but you know what? You know what? Oh yeah, I'll, pro I'll probably gonna die here. Uh. Do it! Let's shoot him. Lantern bash? 
pep talk. Ooh, you can do it, you frog toad bustle hustler. No! No, Pete! Kill coffee. Smack that man. Pete! No, Pete. Hey, he whiffed me. Justice has been served to the old house gang. Got bags of ears and such. That's a gang six gun. Oh my god, I. Horn swoggling, duh. Level up that horn swoggling. Need to level up my horn swoggling a bit. Ow. Ow. Was that it? Was that, was that it? That was it. I can't even get in the house? Well, I'm going to snake pit mine then. A skeleton approaches you in that jittery, stop motiony way that skeletons do. Judging by its head, it appears to be the skeleton of a bean slinger. You remember the classic saying, Old bean slingers die like normal people, but sometimes they keep walking around and casting spells at you afterward. I'm gonna trick it and take a tag, so I got horn swoggling too. Oh no, this won't do at all. Your posture's terrible. You look like you died of scoliosis. Skeleton scan stands still, puzzled as you move around behind it and grab its soldier, uh, shoulders. Come on now, shoulders back, spine straight. That's a little better, but jeez, look at that curve in this neck. Hold still for a second. With a sharp twist, you pop the skeleton's skull right off. Take its hat and toss the skull away. The rest of the body scampers off to try to find it. <laughs> Cowboy chef's hat. This won't be very helpful to me because of uh, bean slinging, and I'm not a bean slinger. Like, let, let me look at this. So what do I got? I got a floppy derby. The derby's giving me moxie. I don't want to lose any of my moxie. Look at the mining equipment. You have no idea what any of it does. Ask Pete to, to explain it to Pete. Ask Pete to explain it to you. I'll ask Pete. Hey Pete, do you know how any of this stuff works? I reckon I do, but I ain't gonna tell you. Don't want you getting any ideas, you see. Well, okay then. I'll explain it to Pete this time. Hey Pete, what? I just want to tell you about this mining stuff. Mm, okay. So this first machine here, this is an automatic... Uh, rock dissolver. Uh, this thing over here, this thing is used to extract columnar sulfur and then bifurcate it. This third machine, this is uh, a refined silver flattener. It converts dust into the seismic stance, sandstone. You sure do think you know a lot about mining. You're a real expert. You gain XP when you interact with mining stuff. Pete rolls his eyes. Are you finished? Yeah. Alright. Pile of loose boards. Snake coiled up in the little hole. I'm gonna punch it. I'm gonna punch the shit out of it. See this fucking thing? It's gonna get punched. It's gonna get whacked. And it's gonna get punched again. It's gonna shot. Snake venom bladder.
and coal snake skin. Oh, add it to my hat for plus three moxie. Yes, please. I got 12 moxie. Uh, mining supplies. I got a can of oil. Is this a lubricant or a lubricant? Both in a sense because it's a can of lubricant. <coughs> smelling salts. This is a bottle. Foul smelling ammonia crystals designed to disgust people into being more awake. It's items used in combat. Oops. Yeah, I'll, I'll beat up a smoking snake. Bam! Ah! You ain't doing nothing to me. I'll shoot you to death. Coal snake. Somebody left a pick here. Pick it up. Then it's full of snake eggs. Pull them out. Well, I wish I had more, uh, space to goof with. Snakes! <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make him do that, because this is, uh, it's gonna hurt. Pete's dead. I uh, won't in my turn. Why shouldn't? Why would I not do this? Dynamite. Poison. I'm gonna pull a snake out. They take so much damage. No. Kill it. <laughs> it did one damage. It did one damage. I'll just kill it, man. Not enough skin on any of them to be worth collecting. Well, yeah, I mean, they are just baby snakes. Uh, meat vein. Oh my god. Okay, so, because I took Pete, I'm getting a meat nugget plus some meat from the thing itself anyway. He points out some more meat, and I get XP because of mind splaining. That's ridiculous. the pile of loose boards for uh, cavern canyon you notice a smoldering hole in the ground and recognizes the habitat of the southeast western coal snake they keep to themselves mostly but they're also known to enjoy a fight if one's thrust upon them thrust one upon it bam <laughs> Smack it. No. Pete. Cold snake skin. Danger spider. Oof, ouch. Let's uh let's let's get out of here. I don't need to be in there with them. Those boards can't hide from your prying eyes or your prying crowbar. Danger spider. The door has like 15 deadbolts on it. The note tacked to it says, Please don't open this door unless you want to get eaten by a giant spider. Even then, don't open it because the rest of us don't want to get eaten by a spider.
It isn't even signed, so you can hardly be expected to take it seriously. Open a door. The tunnel behind this opening goes straight up. There's no way to get through it unless you're a huge spider. Now nah, it's open. Medicine. Laudanum. Uh, Army field trauma kit. Oh, I only have one choice. Dang. Summon the spider. So the gang on the other side is a big spider jump. You're not going to be able to f get to them from the sand. Maybe if you had more legs, you'd be able to pick your way through it. Is that like a spider joke? I'll deal with that gang later. Fort Cowardice. Just like the old saying goes, when life gives you cannons, make cannonade. Climb up into the watchtower and take a look around. Nice view from up here. Oh, I did not go into the mess hall. Unusually sized cannonball. Demi Cole. Over in Cannonball. Cannonball is made to fit a demi culver in a cannon with a bore diameter of 10 centimeters. No demi less, no demi more. The sign has the goblin word for toilet on it. Does the sign says toilet and goblin, which means that this is pretty likely that the goblins use this tent as a toilet. No way are you going to go in there. Caught soaked with blood. Based on the papers and anatomical diagrams scattered across the surface, you're guessing this desk belonged to Fort Cowardice's nurse. Look at the papers. Papers are mostly just boring. Medical records, denter, dental daguerreotypes, lamentations of that antibiotics hasn't been discovered yet. That kind of thing. Hey, what's this? This looks like this might be important. Marching orders. Bunch of di disgusting drawings of sliced open... Bodies. The shelf still has some unlooted medical supplies on it. Render them looted. Military grade whiskey. Ooh. Nah. I need safe cracking to get that. Okay, let me uh my character. Up my snake whip and my Dead eye a couple times. Put my moxie up one more. You hear the sounds of several goblins snoring inside this tent. Yeah, I'll leave them alone. Mess all bleh. Spice rack. Shaker saltpeter. Looks like there's still some good mess left. Military grade whiskeys. Hard tech. Cupboard's bare. The cupboard is bare, also it's not really a cupboard. It's once a reception desk, but now the most appropriate thing for it is uh, to receive would be a free trip to the dump. This cab is mostly empty, but there are a handful of boring personnel records in the back of one drawer. Examine them. Nah, they're really incredibly boring. I, I don't want details. Fine, you read one. Lieutenant Rowena Hubbard. A uh, bunch of crap. Another. 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 Ah, uh, <laughs> now you're just looking at the same ones you've read before. What's wrong with you? I can't get enough. Ah, uh, I need needles. I don't have needles. I 
I do not have needles. This is my problem right now. I have no needles. Now well, time to go back to dirt water. Get myself some needles, possibly. You come across the corpse of a cowboy. How do you know it's the corpse of a cowboy? Well, you see by his outfit that he's a cowboy, and you see by his lack of flesh that he's a corpse. I'll give him a proper burial. Honorable and a shovel. It's the least I could do. To honor that. Honor that. Sir, do you have any, uh, you don't. That's sad that you don't actually have what I need here. Look at that upcharge. I, I sold it for 25. Uh, no mail. Turn in the bag of ears. I'll give her what's left of the Desert House gang. Well, this, uh, this certainly is a bag of severed ears and teeth and such. Which gang was this? The house in the Desert Gang. I'll take your word for it. Good job. Thanks a bundle. Stripey is in Cavern Canyon. Sure. I didn't get that location apparently. No. Wrong place. Go to the kitchen. We got that saltpeter yet? Yeah, I got it right here. That's the stuff. Thanks. Okay, the next thing I need is a certain kind of hot pepper. It's called a murder pepper because it's really spicy. Because it literally has a knife and kills people who ask dumb questions. They grow in the area outside of town. You should be able to find the one if you just wander around a while. Okay. I did not press C. Thank you. Good. I'm just wandering around. Catch a whiff of something that makes your eyes watery. Trace it to its source. A vividly colored red shape hanging from a scraggly little plant. This must be that southeast western murder pepper that feller at the jewel is looking for. Grab it. Your finger and thumb immediately start throbbing as you pluck the pepper. You toss it into your rucksack before it can do any more damage. Hot. Keep wandering around dirt water. I can't do that because I don't have a needle. Wander again. You encounter an overturned wagon surrounded by ruined books and broken pairs of spectacles. Looks like a family of especially literate homesteaders met at an untimely end here. Tragic. Look through the... Ooh. I got one book that's both undestroyed and remotely interesting to you. Modern Snake Oiler 101. Nice. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta read it. Quick on the draw. No. Let's see, passive skill that multiplies poison I give to enemies. A skill that I have to use to increase my speed. I say extra poison. Three times as much poison. Pete? You got something to say? What's shaking, Pete? The old coal ridge mine ain't far if you mind to check it out. What's it like? Never been, but it could have. It sounds a friendly type of place. Coal ridge mine. What do you think we should do next? Uh, tell me to go to the railroad camp. Go, Tina.
Oh, I'll go wander around the desert house. <laughs> Spot smoldering ruins of a ranch on the horizon. Ominous. Stern's Ranch. Keep wandering around a little bit. You see a streak of fire blast across the sky and land over just the horizon. You ride to the site of the impact and find a, a meat eeyore. Go after it with your pickaxe. Oh. Holy shit. Holy shit. 1,513 meat and stardust. Unfortunately, your pick melts from the heat of the meteor. The heatior. Oh, well. God damn. Spot a small uh, cottage on the horizon with what looks like a work table in front of it. Silversmith's house. Keep wandering. The Dave Yard. Shaggy Dog Cave. Once more. Oh, you notice the tra you notice trails of burnt vegetation off the side of the trail, which can only mean one thing: a hell calf is grazing nearby. Oh, I'm fighting this. I'm fighting this cow. Holy shit! I'm whipping it. Yeah, you're poisoned with six poison. I think you'll die after your turn, of course. <laughs> I got tainted milk. Increases your increases your mysticality by eleven and your speed by five. Extra thick leather. One more. One more. Ah, it's just a coal snake. I don't need a coal snake. Oh, uh, um. Shaggy Dog Cave. Buttonwill McKittrick store. You know what? I, I, need, I need to go to this store. I need to go to a store. Like, I. If this person has a, uh. If this person sells needles, I'll be happy. Take a step backwards. This barrel smells like pickles and looks like an empty pickle barrel. At first you're excited because you think this barrel is full of pickles, but they turn out to be novelty rubber pickles. A hammer. For a thousand meat. Mind your meat. Snake oiler, duh. Needles! And I need a new pickaxe, so I'm gonna... Hope I don't regret this. Snake oiler. Fan hammer? Quick of the jar, strong. Fan hammer, duh. Shoot first, then shoot again, then shoot again. Then ask questions if there's anything left to ask questions of. Shoot your target three times. Unfortunately, a stray spark from one of your shots sets the magazine on fire and you're unable to prevent it from being destroyed. I might come back to this store at some point. But to the shaggy dog cave. As you turn a corner, you come face to face with three bandits pushing a large barrel marked TNT down the trail. The four of you stare at each other for a moment, unsure of how to deal with this potentially violent happenstance. Tricked them out of some gear. It's horn swoggling too. Whew. Good thing I caught up to you guys. The sheriff's looking for three fellas dressed like bandits pushing a barrel. If he sees you like that, the plan's bust. Hell and tarnation, what should we do? Well, I reckon he's looking for three fellas dressed like bandits, right? Not two fellas dressed like bandits and one fella in his underwear. Hey, that's there's some good thinking. Thanks, partner. Three bandits draw lots and the loser hands you his gear. Bandit pistol, a black hat, and black denim pants. I just made a man strip. 
See, I want to keep what I have. Because right now, I have a better gun. Let's see, 5 to 7, 4 to 5. Technically, pickaxe is more damage, so. Um, that's better. I got black denim pants now. Can you not do that in my ear? Thank you. There's a plaque bolted to the cave wall here. A record of the events of the Expedition 2 and into Shaggy Dog Cave, November 1887, as recorded by Jim Clackwright. Oh, shit. I am all out of time for this episode today, fellas. I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.